on guys this is my new paintball question and answer show I don't know what to call it yet some sort of thing where you guys send me questions and I answer them I'm not sure what to call it so leave me suggestions down below we can figure out what to call this thing Thank you everyone who submitted questions. Some really broad ones that are easy to elaborate on and I think helpful for a lot of people. Really, really specific ones, which are good too. So we're gonna answer some of those broad ones and maybe some more specific ones. First, James Holmes asked, what do you think is the best overall barrel kit for matching paint to barrel size? So it seems like it's kind of a difficult thing if you don't know really what you want or what the deal is with barrels because there's so many. There's a lot of companies making barrels. And to me, essentially, they're kind of all the same thing. We have to think of barrels are just tubes of aluminum. So getting a barrel kit that can do a lot of stuff is good. So I personally think that the best overall barrel kit, like the best thing to do, is something that takes freak inserts. I can actually show you that once. <laughs> Bam, barrels magically appear. So freak kits, right? So freak kits are kind of a broad term. Typically when people talk about freak barrels, they're specifically meaning any barrel that these inserts fit into. There's a lot of companies that make barrels that will take the freak inserts, like GOG, the company, this stuff's all GOG. Uh, used to be Smart Parts, they were the original people that designed um, and came up with the freak kit and inserts. Uh, but there's lots of companies that will take these freak inserts or make barrels that will take these freak inserts uh, like deadly wind makes one um, they make these carbon fiber ones um, or god inception design does gog makes another carbon fiber barrel planet eclipse makes um, an insert barrel uh, that will take the inserts uh, so i like the inserts because uh, their versatility and cost effectiveness so essentially you could buy the whole entire freak kit uh, for $160, I believe, um, and you get yeah eight inserts and the barrel. Uh, so it's 160 bucks versus buying like I don't know a whole die barrel kit or the Planet Eclipse barrel kits or Inception Design or something or the CP ones, which are all gonna end up being if you want eight sizes, hundreds of dollars. So this gives you a lot of versatility um, and it's priced well. And it doesn't really matter which barrel you have that takes the inserts as much because um, if you think about it like say these two both take inserts um, inserts just slide in the back of these things so the paintball for the most part is only going to be touching this back half of the barrel um, where the front part just helps control velocity a little bit makes it a little more consistent and uh, will quiet down the shot quite a bit so for cost effectiveness and versatility I like the freak kit. Hugo Romero asks, are high-end paintballs worth the price? I ask because I normally shoot four star and Empire Premium. Although curious, I can't seem to justify the extra price for Ultra Evil without knowing if we'll make that much of a difference. High-end paint. I kind of feel like the four star and the premium are high-end. And I think with paintballs, we'll say like talking like pricing wise, right? So I think we have price range tier stuff. So like $40 stuff, um, 50 ish and then 60 and up so there's kind of we can think about it as three levels like low end mid range ish uh, and then high end so I think whenever you get over that 60 price uh, like the premium is um, or the four star I'm pretty sure four stars 60 I don't know maybe it's 65 I don't know so within those prices like that $40 stuff is typically going to be about the same um, that 50 ish stuff's about the same and then when you get that 60 and higher price it's all about the same. I can't say that the four star is not as good as the five star because it is. It's not that much of a difference. I mean, the five star might be like a teeny bit more brittle, um, but not really. I mean, for the average person, unless you're doing some crazy testing, you're probably not really going to see the brittleness difference. I think batch to batch, the paint can change a little bit, but typically, at least definitely comparing like four star and ultra evil or five star, there's probably not much of a difference. So is it worth spending the extra money? No. I mean, I feel like paint-wise, the sweet spot's in that 50 price. Um, so what's good that's $50? Like 3 Star or Formula 13? Um, there's a bunch of other brands, but most of it, $50? That's my sweet spot, so I'm a fan of the $50 stuff. Carrie M asked, 
Can you explain the whole pro player thing? I know some pro players are paid to play, but are all pro players paid? Are there pro teams with no paid players? I mean, besides paying for travel, food, gear, pain, etc., I mean paid like a real pro. I have heard some pro players having a job and playing paintball. If you can explain how the whole pro paintball works. So this whole paintball players getting paid to play paintball is like a weird topic. I know a lot of them don't want to talk about it. Most of the pros don't want to talk about it because most of the guys aren't getting paid and they don't want to, at least I wouldn't, want to like single people out or make people feel bad or like make them think that I'm better than you because hey, everyone, I get this much money to play paintball and you don't. I personally wouldn't talk about it and I know a lot of the guys don't talk about it for that reason probably. Um, but yeah, for sure there's people to get paid. So I'd say like most of the guys on Impact and Heat get played, paid. Um, you know that some of the X Factor guys get paid. Um, pretty much any of those like super famous paintball people are getting paid. I mean, there's no way that like, think about it. There's no way that like Fedorov and like Brindikov and those guys aren't making money. There's no way they're coming from freaking Moscow from Russia to play paintball for, you know, four days and then just fly back. They'd have to be eating something out of it. So if you think about like the, the lower like tier teams, like say, I don't know, Uprising or Revo, where they don't have a lot of money. I mean, they don't get, they don't win tournaments, so they don't get a lot of money from sponsors. Um, they're not winning events, so they're not like paintball famous yet, so they can't ask for those bigger sponsorships. And yeah, a lot of those guys that are pros still work. I mean, you think like most of the Dynasty guys, uh, all of them have real jobs. There's a couple of them that don't, like Ryan doesn't, I don't know what Oliver's doing. Uh, but most of those guys still have to work. Um, and most of the guys that are getting paid, like I said, like the Heat and say Impact guys, have an owner more so that's willing to give money to those players. They're not getting like a million dollars from like GI or something and then they're able to distribute that money. It's actually like Bart from Impact, the owner, paying players more so than um, getting money from sponsorships. Yeah, so some guys get real money, um, most don't. There's probably like 15, 20 dudes that actually get a paycheck to play paintball. And it's not like they're making, you know, five hundred thousand dollars a year either. It's my most of them are probably in the twenty thousand, thirty thousand to play. Kalani Kev, do you think paintball will ever become an Olympic sport? No. For the past like six years, there's been this thing about like, oh, let's get paintball into the Olympics. Like what? It's not gonna happen. Like I don't, I don't understand what what the appeal would be like why do we want at the olympics other than getting more exposure but look at the olympic sports like none of them are popular i mean there's like golf and like soccer those are the two that are like you know popular and the other ones are only popular when the olympics are going on i mean they don't have baseball in the olympics anymore like why would they have paintball i mean we shoot each other like i don't think it's gonna happen dan arnado i really want to get the ether too but everyone is telling me to get the E-Tech 5 or G-Tech. But I'm not the kind of person that is dying for a screen or anything. Should I be worried about anything or just get the G-Tech? So this is kind of a hard question to answer sometimes. Um, mainly because it's all based just on what you're willing to spend on paintball stuff. So in my review of the Etha, somewhere up here, we'll put like a link up there. Um, I like the thing a lot, like I really like it. Um, I think it's just as good as the G-Tech, um, and really just as good as the E-Tech 5. I think that the build quality maybe on the E-Tech 5 or the G-Tech might be like better, um, just because it has more aluminum. The Etha shoots really, really good. Um, it has the same engine or same core as the G-Tech, so it's going to suit really similar. Um, but I think the major difference for people is that the E-Tech and the G-Tech, you can put that OLED screen on. But if having no OLED screen isn't a big deal to you, all three of those are really good guns. Um, so it really kind of is just preference. If you can, find a local paintball store uh, when the Etha 2 comes out and then go hold the things, you know, see which one feels the best. Because I think that that might be the biggest difference um, is ergonomics and how it feels. Uh, so try to hold them first. I mean, the Etha 2 should be out pretty soon, a couple weeks here. Um, so you should be able to go hold one. I personally would buy the Etha and save that $150, buy more paint, and play more paintball.
Thanks guys. So this concludes our new paintball show. Like I said in the beginning, leave, some, leave a comment in the bottom. I wanna know what to name this thing. Um, so hopefully we can yeah, continue to do these. I think they'll come out maybe every Wednesday or Thursday. I know this is Friday, but so if I didn't get to your question, it's possible I'll still answer it. But uh, again, if you have more, just leave them in the comments below. Uh, I read all of them, so I'll see them. Um, we'll put them aside and then probably shoot it next week, answer some more paintball questions. She don't believe in shooting stars, but she believe in shoes and cars. Wood floors in the new apartment, couture from the store's department.